All right, Dad, what game are we playing today? We are playing Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Do you like it? I really like this game. It's a fun one. You get to build crazy castles and score in all sorts of strange ways. So that's a cool game. Well, how do you play? I will gladly show you. As you can see, it already looks like a castle here. We've got our little scoring area that we're going to be growing in. The other thing that we have down here is we've got different rooms that we're going to be building. These tell you the square footage of the rooms, the size of the rooms, and the different types of rooms that are in those piles, as you could say. Um, there's also stairs. There's going to be bonus cards. There's all sorts of ways to get points along the way. And then at the end as well, you're going to have some unique scoring opportunities. And so, in fact, depending on the number of players you have, this is set up for four players. But likewise, there's a three-player side with different areas. I'll show you what those are. So based off of the number of players, you are randomly going to select tiles from these king's bonus points. So, for example, in this game, we are going to have these scoring opportunities at the end of the game. So as you can see a lot of variety already in different things you're trying to achieve. So in this case this is going to be your food rooms. The person that's got the most food rooms in their castle at the end of the game is going to score eight points. Second most of those will score four points, two points, three. And then this is going to be based off of enclosed rooms. So if you've or completed rooms. So whoever's got the most completed rooms will get eight points, four points. Here this is your um, uh, living room areas, but this shows that it's the square footage. So whoever's got the most square footage of that will get eight, eight, four, two, one, etc. And then this is round rooms from your big and your small round rooms. So whoever's got the most is going to score those points. So as you're building your castle, you're keeping these in mind because you're going to score points. In addition, everybody starts out with bonus cards. You're going to get three to start the game and you have to choose two. But they are also going to be kept secret and at the end of the game, you'll re reveal these, and there's going to be different ways to score. So, for example, each of these activity rooms that I have would get me two additional bonus points. So those are going to be kept from players along the way. You'll also be able to get more bonus cards. So, really cool way to score uh, and ways to get points at the end of the game, but you're also going to get points during the game as you go throughout. So, it, it's pretty cool stuff, and I'll show you exactly how that's done. Well... First off, I'll tell you, to play this game, you're going to need a table much bigger than this. Because this is not enough to build our crazy castle. So, that aside, we'll proceed with just one castle being built here to show you how it's done. One person is going to be designated to start as the master builder, and this will change throughout the game. In this case, it's going to be the green player. And then in turn order, they're already getting some points along the way. So yellow, blue, and then red. So what the master builder will do is he will first turn over cards that say which rooms are going to come out into the, uh, well, not the auction. Essentially, these are going to be what's set out. So he'll have a 400 room, a 500 room, a 350 room, and we get, need to get a couple more of those. 450, 300, a 200, and another 200. So in a four-player game, there will be these many slots to be auctioned off. So we're going to set those out. They are not set in the order of which you draw these cards, but instead the master builder gets to choose where they're priced. So as a master builder, I get to set the price of what all these rooms are. So I may say, well, these rooms are going to go cheap. These bigger rooms I'm going to make more expensive. Uh, as you get further along in the game, taking a look at what other players want may help you price these because the catch is, the other players are going to pay that price to the master builder. So if I think the red player really wants this room and he wants it really badly, I'm going to price it at 10000 because when he buys it, he's going to pay me 10000 which is going to get me some money, which is fantastic. So this whole kind of, it's not really an auction, but this is kind of how I set the prices of those rooms. Now he may balk on that and buy a cheaper one, and we'll see. But it's pretty fun how you can set that. So they go in turn order. People are buying these up. He's going to buy a room, say the next player buys this one, and then the red player buys an activity room. And then the master builder can choose to buy a room based off of how he's priced it. He doesn't have to buy any room, or in fact nobody has to buy a room. If you want to pass because the room is too expensive for your taste, 
you can simply pass and collect 5,000. But in this case, we're going to say the master builder gets this room, and then any rooms not selected get some money on them. So in the next round, when these get filled in and the next person arranges those around, those are, in addition to how they're priced, they're going to have some money on them. So it gets a little, little interesting on how those are done. So now let me show you a room, and we'll start building the master builders. Everybody starts with a foyer, and as you can see, there are some entrances to the foyer. You can orient that however you want, and when you buy a room, there's also going to be doorways. Over here, it'll tell you the square footage of the room. Here is how many points you get when you place that room. So, for example, if I were to place this room here so that these doors connect, I'm going to immediately score three points. And then also, I will score any points based off of what's in the center of the tile. In this case, it's going to be if it's connected to a corridor of some sort, which is either stairs or hallways. I would get an additional two points if it was connected to those. But it's not, so for right now, I just get three points and move it along the way. So then, after I've built that, suppose later, I buy myself a washroom. And I go ahead and I connect a washroom. I cannot connect it over here because you can't overlap rooms. I will connect it down here, and I will immediately get two points. Now, these are connected. The other thing is there's no other entrances here, which means this room has been completed. When you complete a room, meaning you've connected all of the open doorways, you're going to get some bonuses. So these are the bonus actions, depending on the type of room. So if I've completed a utility room, I can then take two additional bonus cards from the pile here and choose which one I want to keep. Okay, so now we're a little further along. Check out our castle, how we've done so far. What's really cool is we actually were lucky enough to be able to get this broom closet right in there and complete it. So that was a completed utility room, which gave us more bonus cards. We've got a few things going on. We have a garden area. You can see there's a rail fence on one side of each of kind of the garden or the outdoor areas. You can't put anything adjacent to those, so we haven't. But we also completed that, which gave us a bunch of money. We were able to put an activity room out on the end of that uh, and connect it with seven points. And we put it in an area where it didn't suffer any of those penalties because it was next to an outdoor room, which is pretty slick. The other thing we were able to do in picking up bonus cards was get this one that says we're getting extra points for each of our 300 room. And there's a 300 room that based off of where the door is, because not all shaped rooms have doors in the same places, this one will be able to work out perfect right here. So we're going to pay the master builder 8000 on our turn if no one takes it first. And we're going to set this right up over here because that fits in very nicely. And that's going to give us one point plus three bonus points because we connected it to, or it's connected to, one of the living areas, which is great. So there's four more points for us. But that's also moving us closer to having the, er, the one with the most food rooms. We're looking to get some connected rooms. You know, maybe we're going to be buying some more purple as well. We're probably going to be giving up on this one. Unfortunately, like most games that have a lot of options, you can't do it all. So, would love to get first place in all those. That ain't going to happen because you're only going to get so many rooms done uh, during your building. And this is actually looking pretty nice because a lot of times your concoctions are just way off. One thing I will mention is things like this. This is a basement room. For a basement room, you will have had to have built some stairs that go down into the basement before you can build a basement room. All right, so we're going to keep building like that. We're going to keep going on and on and on until this room deck is completed. And then at the end of the game, everyone's going to total up their points. You'll see who's got the most points or the most in each of these areas. Dish out those points. People are going to reveal their bonus cards and dish out those points and see who wins the game. Sounds simple enough. Yeah, simple enough. Yeah, but what's cool is at the end of the game, even if you don't win, it's just so cool to take a look at your castle. We're always taking a picture of what our crazy castles end up looking like at the end of the game. We're checking out other people's castles, which is great. So um, this is a game that I really enjoy because, uh, like I said earlier, there's so many things to think about. There's the whole pricing mechanism that the master builder, there's the getting the money, 
as the master builder. There's looking at the size of the rooms, they're looking at these bonuses, your bonus points, what's available, how much money you have so you can buy the right room. Inevitably, you're not going to get everything you want or get the rooms to fit perfectly like you want, so you're going to want to play it again, which is just great. But win or lose, you're going to have a fun time building a crazy castle. So I give Castles of Mad King Ludwig 4.5. This is a fantastic game. Thanks. You bet, but there's one more thing, well, two more things I want to tell you about. First off is all of these come as is, as you see them here. What we've actually put together is a cool insert from Daedalus Productions, which you ought to check out. We've got a video shows putting this together to show in more detail. So instead of having to set these out each time, you basically just take the tray out, which is already going to have the items in it. It's got rooms for the different shapes. As you can see here, the 300 room goes over there. This is just fantastic. So instead of setting these out, you can actually have this out and pull from it. And then put it away, it's nice and easy. So that's one thing. Check out the video on the insert for Daedalus Productions. It's fantastic. The other thing is that just this past week, uh, Bezier Games has come out with a digital version of this available on Android and iOS. So if you're not ready to jump into it yet, but you want to test it out, go check it out uh, at your favorite app store. Download the game and play it that way. Uh, and it's a great way to be introduced, and then probably you're going to go ahead and be picking up a copy yourself anyway. So go check it out. <laughs>